or what? I know we're just going. Go. 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 All right. Hi, guys. Welcome. Uh, I'm not going to get into the particulars. Uh, my name is Mike Mintz, uh, My Media Labs. We can talk after if you want to know more. The presentation is called uh, World War Me Facebook Advertising That Gets Attention for Your Business. So let's go ahead and start. Um, okay. So, the top 10 Facebook advertising tips. Now, this actually comes from a, a PDF that is available from Facebook for free. Uh, I just wanted to make it a visual thing that has a little more impact for you and then maybe expand on some of these concepts. Okay, the first thing that you want to do in a Facebook ad is you want to ask questions in your body text to engage your audience. Okay, so the idea of asking questions, whenever you're going to ask a question, it's going to raise curiosity. And that's what you want to do in the, in the body text. You want to raise curiosity because ultimately with a Facebook ad, you're going for one of two things. You either want a click that's going to bring somebody to a destination or you want to make an impression. Depending on your strategy and what it is you're trying to accomplish, you are going to choose one or the other. And actually, the payment system works off either whether you want to have a click or an impression. Um, just to summarize in five seconds, I will be writing an ebook on this that will be available in May, which will expand on all this. So if you have a real hunkering for more information, you can get it. Okay, the second uh, best practice is you want to create a sense of urgency. Okay, we, we can use urgency words such as enroll today, click now, buy, um, or shark, right? So these are all urgency words. The words that would really make somebody like look, and maybe even do a double take. Uh, one of the, the, the greatest uh, analogies I like to make when I talk about advertising is think of the cheesiest infomercial you've ever seen. These guys actually have pretty decent advertising uh, skills woven into those infomercials. It's built all around the pitch, the offer, the question, right? Oh, hey, wouldn't you like to stop cutting your pet's nails and making them bleed? You're immediately thinking, you know, I kind of would like that. And then so on and so forth, then the sales made. So uh, create a sense of urgency with these, and of course we're talking about how to make a, a call to action. There are five, uh, four tips here how to make a killer call to action. You want to create context by showing the need, right? So hey, pet owner, wouldn't you like to stop cutting your dog's nails and making them bleed? Sure. Clearly explain the benefits to the buyer. No more messy cleanup, no more blood on the floor. These are benefits. Um, keep it simple, don't give too many options. So you're not saying, well you could buy this product, this product, or this product. You're saying, we have the pet trimmer nail file thingy that doesn't work very well. I actually bought one. So, um, And then finally, for you want to use urgency phrases, as, as we just said, like buy now, or offer expires soon, call the next 30 minutes, and you'll get an extra one free. Okay, third, you want to highlight special offers or discounts. Uh, you can do this again in the body text, in the copy. So uh, these are, you know, a little play on that, right? I mean, you've seen these stores maybe in, in, in these signs in stores in America. Uh, win a free ride in a police car just by shoplifting from this store. Take notice of the fact the word free, right? The word free gets us going. We hear free, it does one or two things. It either makes us go, yeah, right, right? And you want to confirm suspicion, which is actually a motivating factor, or free is going to raise an interest because who doesn't like free stuff? If you don't like it, you can throw it away. Okay, that's something I learned in college. Four, keep the language simple. You want short and concise and make every word count. My, one of my favorite books on writing is Strunk and White, um, The Elements of Style. It's an old classic. Anyone who took English in the States knows this book. But rule 13 is omit needless words. And this is very, very key when you talk about advertising. You want to keep it simple, stupid, by avoiding the following. Don't put in corporate jargon, no technical mumbo jumbo, leave your legalese out, and of course, please, no Klingon. <laughs> Okay, five, you want to use colorful and engaging images that maximize the space and avoid logos. The temptation, in fact, one of the mistakes I made on my very first uh, ad campaign for a client was I used the corporate logo. Now, luckily, people love that logo, so it actually got a lot of clicks, but as a rule, you want to avoid corporate logos because they're a little boring. Thank you so much. Um, they're a little bit boring. So instead, you want to find a picture that's engaging. You want to find pictures that have color, that um, are also not too much. So if you look at the three pictures of Dorothy, right? The one with her with the lion and the Tin Man and the Scarecrow, it's too many people. It's too much going on there. Uh, you got to see this space right here. Uh, and I'm sorry, I can't really, I'm not on the screen. Yeah, this space right here, that's the space you have. It's a very small space. It's 110 pixels by 80. It's a very small photo that shows up in the ad. Okay? So you need something that's going to pop, that's going to be very, it's going to use the space well. So this picture of Dorothy that we said is the best, that's going to really do all that. Okay, six, you want to send users to a relevant landing page that references what your ad says. The best ad in the world, you could spend the most money on clicks, you could spend 
you know, a ton of money on impressions. It will not matter. It can be a perfect ad if you're bringing people to a shoddy website. Now, one of the number one amateur mistakes people make when they're advertising on Facebook is they say, well, I've got a Facebook page. What a great idea to bring them to my Facebook page. But they create no landing page. So you bring them to your Facebook page, and where do I end up? On your wall. What does a wall look like on Facebook? It's chaotic. There's, oh, so-and-so likes this. And, like, no one knows what to do. So, landing page tips. Engineer the experience from start to finish. They do this in Disney World. You walk through the door and automatically they have a sign for uh, drinks. And uh, then you have the roller coaster. And then right after the roller coaster, another sign for drinks. And they know the drink stand is 50 paces from there. They engineer the experience. It's the same thing with a landing page. Two, engaging headlines, which should greet the user upon arrival. You need engaging headlines. That's a whole seminar in itself. Uh, but I will be putting that in ebook, so we're not going to get too into that. Uh, dedicate the space to a single purpose. Meaning, this landing page should be getting people to do one thing. Usually, if you're trying to bring them to a Facebook page, it's to get them to like your page. If you want to see a great example of this, go to Red Bull. Red Bull on Facebook. Their Facebook page is fantastic for getting people to like. Take a look at it, take my card, and call me and say, Mike, you were right. Finally, uh, you want to make a clear call to action, which we already talked about. If you have too many calls to action, or if your call to action is confusing, people aren't going to know what to do. And finally, if you're sending to your, your users to your Facebook page, as I already mentioned, please, I'm going to reiterate it because it bears repeating. Do not send them to your wall. Create a custom landing page. If you need to know how to do that, please call me. I have lots of things I can help you with that. Finally, uh, actually no finally, number seven, targeting by location. You want to select the area where your audience is located. Okay, so Facebook has an amazing tool for this. Um, they, they have a demographics tool. They also have what I call a lycographics tool, which we'll talk about in a second. The demographics tool gives you pretty accurate numbers on how many people are in a given area. So you can see for this search here, um, we looked at uh, who is in the Jerusalem area. We only wanted people that were 50 miles outside of Jerusalem on Facebook that were over the age of 18, 166,100. I'm sure if I opened this up to Tel Aviv, I would get a lot more than that. And you'd probably get about 2 million. Um, Jerusalem, not as many people on Facebook. So location targeting tips. You want to narrow down by neighborhood, by target buyers. So where do they live and where do they work? Okay, again, you need to know your target buyer. There's a whole study we can do on that called buyer personas. I'll just throw that word out. You might want to write it down. Um, that's a, a very, very important topic. But if you know your buyer, you know their persona, you can start to target them also by location. The reason you don't want to just go for all of Israel, again, you have to look at where your, what your product does. If it's a virtual product, maybe. But maybe not, right? Maybe it's not appropriate for Hardoff. Maybe it's appropriate for uh, Rechavia, whatever it is. The more targeted your advertising is, the better it's going to be. Uh, number two, you want to be realistic about how far people will travel for what you offer. If it's something they get in the real world, be realistic. And finally, you want to test different geographic markets with different ads. So you might try the, the same three ads. It's called split testing. You try the same three ads and try differing the geographic, the demographic geographic uh, details to see which ones perform better. And then you know that that's the demographic geographic you got to hit. OK. Finally, uh, I keep saying finally. I got to stop saying that. Uh, number eight. Number eight, use the demographic profile of your existing customers to help target who your customers might be. So here we see we have lawn gnomes, okay? So we know that lawn gnomes that like the Jets might also, you know, there might be women, and also people like the lawn gnomes that like the Knicks. That may also be part of my demographic. Number nine, this is my specialty. I'm writing a very special chapter on this. This is called lycographics. This is a term that I think I've coined because the Google search did not turn it up anywhere. The biggest, most powerful thing about Facebook is that it allows you to target people by their interests, the interests that they put on their profile. So those lawn gnomes, these lawn gnomes in the next slide, they could say, well, I like Harleys and I like football. Well, guess what? My ad will only show then to lawn gnomes who like Harleys and like football. Okay, and then finally, because I have to wrap it up right now, you can hyper-target by breaking your target audience into smaller groups. So if my target audience um, is lawn gnomes, well, then I'm going to break them up. I also realized maybe through my research that uh, lawn gnomes that also like to ride Harleys and are bikers and lawn gnomes that also like sports are also part of my target audience. So I'm going to break that up and I'm going to start to target their interests by putting in Harleys, motorcycles, football, the Jets, the Knicks. And, um, and the way you're going to do that then, of course, it, that is going to help you to reach more people. Okay, and finally, um, we have a seminar special. If you write on one of the on the back of one of the business cards, your name, uh, first and last name, and your email address, I'll put you on a mailing list to receive a special discount on some upcoming eBooks. Uh, in May, there will be World War Me Facebook advertising that works. The eBook will become available. If you'd like to get on the email list for that, please put your name on one of the cards provided. Feel free to take a card also because I have tons of them. That's it, guys. Okay. Thank you.